Well, then let's bring out our guests, uh, Lucas and Josie from American Gothic. Er, sorry, pardon me, Australian <laughs> Gothic. <laughs> Come on out and do your best Australian accent. Whoa, it's happening in stereo. You still have time oh. to dance. You still have time. There it is. Oh, now we're stopping? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. And Good Beautiful day. Australian accents. Yeah. <laughs> and truly, That's... indeed, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not too bad. Um, because we're... Um, it's 11 a.m. and I've already had a beer, but I've realized time <laughs> is a social construct. Um, and you folks are in Canada, Canada, and um, you know what? It's okay. We can meet in the middle. What time is it there? It is 7 p.m. In the whole Lovely. country, all of Canada. All right. Yeah. It's yeah. one time zone like China. So I'm drinking on behalf of you folks. Beautiful. Except Thanks. Newfoundland. Newfoundland is still a half hour ahead. Don't ask. <laughs> Yeah. So, so do you guys um, want to? Oh, I hear there's erotica, and my auntie is like watching right now. So I think we should just get stuck into it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this erotica was written by someone's aunt, so it's perfect. Ugh. We should just get stuck into it, much like some things that are about to happen in the piece that Kelly's about to read. Okay. Yeah. And like astute viewers will know, there was a bit of a fake out last week, where or last episode, where we were going to read the erotica, and then you know kind of weaseled out of it. Oh no, cowards. Um, but that was just because um, this is Nicole's favorite book and I wanted her to be here for it. So, um, but it's not me that's going to read the erotica. Uh, it is official cowboy of the show, Starch McCaller. Uh, if you just want to play the guest music again. <laughs> Damn it, I should have brought cowboy stuff. Oh. Well, <laughs> you had the chance. You did mention specifically cowboy erotica. Did, did, you, want, did you want to go get some cowboy stuff? No, I don't we think stall. we have anything We've got you. a technical difficulty screen. Speak for yourself. The queer cowboy look is very prominent right now. So I have several bowler ties. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm nailing it, right? It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it perfectly. So, <clears throat> I believe we'll uh, pick up where we left off last time with... Uh, Nicole, would you like to explain who these characters are? Um, yes. I know, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I I've only skipped through to the sex scenes and I don't remember any of the plot. So, <laughs> <laughs> and to to be fair to this book, there is no fucking until like halfway through. This is when it starts. We oh, gotta set the scene. Okay. E everything else is plot development. I yeah. I skimmed like hard through. Okay, so I actually, if I remember correctly, it's a cowboy and his ex-wife, and they are trying to rekindle their relationship. Mm-hmm. And he is a cowboy at the Calgary Stampede, represent. Mm -hmm. um, and he is... <laughs> um, he is... Josh, get your assless chaps. Um, he is taking up a modeling job because he's going broke. Does that sound correct? Did you read the yeah. back of the book? And fast forward to where we are now. <laughs> she is currently... Uh, he is currently looking at her like he was a starving wolf and she was a juicy T-bone. So... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Do. Like effects. a Warner Brothers that cartoon, yeah. uh, the erotica <laughs> yeah. of our childhood. <laughs> Someone looks like a big giant ham. I have mm -hmm. the Just best of us. Mouth open, comically dripping with saliva. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's a thick ham. Okay. Here we go. His eyes were soft, but intense in the fading glow of sunset. <laughs> And she could see the huge bulge straining in his pants as he waited for her answer. 
His power and restraint, so beautiful and raw, Woods failed her. So Jenna let her hands do the talking. <laughs> Still holding his gaze, she started popping open the buttons down the front of her shirt. With each one, her breathing increased, matching the rate of each inhale. Chase pulled through his flared nostrils. <laughs> the last button slipped free and Jenna let the sides fall away. Like a magnet drawn to steel, Chase's eyes dropped and he swallowed hard. Jenna's nipples perked up higher, tingling and straining under the thin material of a bra. Please, please, hold your applause till the end. As he slowly rubbed his hands up and down her thighs, she felt the tension build in the muscles of his where they flanked her. On a rush of feminine power, Jenna moved to undo the clasp of her bra, but his hands came down over hers, stopping her. No, let me. Passion flat hot, dilating his pupils as he pushed the scrap of cloth out of, the, out of his way and cupped her breasts, pressing them closer together and rolling his thumbs over the sensitized peaks. <laughs> So he's you like a 12 year old seeing boobs for the first time. You don't know how many times <laughs> I've wanted to touch you like this in the last few days. I don't know why I said 12 year old. That was bad. <laughs> yeah. Do, do we want to dwell on that for a minute? I can take <laughs> a little break from reading and then. No, let's, let's just steamroll right past that. Okay. We'll put a pin in that and come back to it. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. She'd cause the guttural quality of his voice. Relishing the thought, Jenna's nerves fired at random and her legs twitched. She wanted to drive him as senseless as he was her, so she wiggled closer and stroked his erection through the worn <laughs> denim, but it wasn't good enough. She needed oh. the naked length and weight of him pulsing in her palm. <laughs> Chase Jesus dove Christ. forward and feasted on her aching breast, momentarily throwing off her goal, licking and nibbling first one nipple, then the other. His silky <laughs> hair tickled her and filled her head with a mixture of cologne and heated male flesh. The opposing rough texture of his day-old beard and the moist velvet inside his mouth shut all but the most primal part of her down. And Jenna went after Chase's strain and zipper, as though her life depended on getting in there. Yes, he growled as he brought his mouth down over hers, shifting one knee between hers and pressing in tight so she could rock against him. She pushed his jeans over his hips and dragged the front of his shorts down. His penis sprang forward, <laughs> the velvet tip leaving a trail of moisture across her belly. <laughs> Do slime like a slug or something like that. <laughs> Keep salt away from this man's dick. I think that's as good as a place as any to leave it. Unless the audience wants more. Um, give me like another another uh, two paragraphs, please. Yeah, yeah. You can't just All leave right. the, the slug dick. We should go to like first thrust at least, shouldn't we? Like, <laughs> all right, first, first thrust it is. We do listen to our guests. <laughs> Driving his tongue past her lips, Chase plundered the inside of Jenna's mouth as she shoved at the bunched up denim, further bearing his ass. Grabbing the taut cheeks, she dug in and held on as his hips pumped, rubbing against her and mirroring the thrust of his tongue. There we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Yep. That'll. That can, yeah. I think. I think <laughs> <that'll> <laughs> <thrust. Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking hell! It also well, occurred to me when I said that. It's just like, who knows? Down, oh, kitties. I think it's time we all got some snooze before that desert sun comes up overhead. I think that's for the best. Fucking hell! Jesus. It's funny because, like, the only other time I stream, it's for our game of Deadlands, which is a horror western setting. So, in a way, this is perfect. I'm totally in my element. Yeah. Great work. Mm. This is my first time. It's already... I, I've had enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's good. It's great. No, thank you for that. That was wonderful. Yeah, mm. My pleasure. Enough wonderful Kelly. is what I'd say. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stay uh, in character as Starch McCuller the whole time. It's way more fun than being me. Oh, yeah. oh no.
<laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so what's next on the agenda, folks? Well, great news on that front um, is that um, from what I understand, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is going to be a very different episode in that we're all going to be hands off the wheel and you two are just like just going to grab us roughly by the denim and take control. Not me being a control freak. That's very out of for me. <laughs> Cool, you gave the two guys who will just like rant on for hours about shit. Like, I don't know, just feel free to like cut us off at any point. Yeah, seriously, please, dude. <laughs> no, we Can are we are beyond excited to just lay back and take it. Uh, whatever you you're going to give to us. If you're here to get cut off, let me tell you, Kelly is your guy. So <laughs> <laughs> it is. You came to the right place. No, jump in at <gasps> any point if you want us to elaborate on some stupid shit or like, or or principally to tell us to like shut up about stupid shit like we are very happy to cooperate <laughs> yeah because there's like so many things like just slang or um assumed knowledge that we might be um we might cover so basically today or rather this morning <laughs> um i created a little powerpoint presentation for um shit cunts who lost their uh political seat on the weekend. We had a federal election on the weekend and uh, we have a new government, uh, which is much like the old government, but they put like a rainbow flag um, in front of all the fascist policies that they enact. Um, yep. But there are a few people who did this, lo lose their seats and um, we we'll take what joy we can. So I thought we might just do um, a little a tiny rundown of a few of those people. Um, Mostly it's just like little bits of trivia that you might not get from your mainstream reporting. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yay. Right. Also, so I actually, I already have a slang question because yeah. as I understand in, uh, you know, the, uh, Australians Creole English that you speak, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the term, the term cunt's like a term of endearment, right? Almost like yeah. it's, uh, ooh, it depends, depends on the use. Yeah. Cause, I, cause I would assume that like, you know, everything's topsy-turvy and upside down, so all the curse words are compliments. So, like, is, like, you know, like, a cunt is your friend, but, like, a shit cunt is, like, a really, really good person, right? Of that or dog cunt, that denotes that's that, That's the like, harshest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You dog cunt is, right. like, so, yeah, like, the harsh. best vibes. Mm. But, yeah, how's and, it going, cunt, is, like, you know, how's it going? in a very, very casual setting is, like, Hey, how's it going? Like, I'm ex I, it's like you're so excited to be here that you can't restrain yourself. Um, and yeah, it's it's to do with the inflection. Like, I'll say to so many of my friends, "Boy, you can't," <laughs> and that's just like, <laughs> "Are you cheeky?" Um, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I guess before I get started on the presentation, um, I realized that the, despite what I say about any of these people, the policies that they enact are by far the worst things about them. Um, mm -hmm. And these are just sort of uh, peripheral things that are, I find interesting or, you know, worthy of note, but like, you know, all of these people support the um, illegal detention of people seeking asylum. Um, poverty is a policy choice. And um, so that's the most damning thing about any of them, but we'll get our mm -hmm. laughs where we can. Yep. Also, should Extremely we also relatable. point out that, uh, that you know, in Australia, we kind of have a... Is it a minority government? Have they determined that yet? No. No, okay. But there is the hope that because there are a lot more, like, independent and minor party people who have seats, um, that at least, you know, the you know new government can be stopped on some of the bullshit that they're trying to port over from, like, the previous government. So, so that gives us some optimism and also, like, also, these fuckers losing their seats is just, like Josie said, a, a point of joy for us that we yeah. should should take, like, um, like a starving man having crackers. Like, Because I guess for any folks that don't, like, know who we are, like, we have a podcast called Australian Gothic where we cover different sort of um, parts of Australian culture. And I guess I imagine, like, you folks are from Canada, right? Like, there are so many through lines where... Um, you know, the dark history and ongoing um, colonialism uh, means that there's this weird thing where you both carve out some cultural, um, you know, 
there there are some some uniqueness to it, but I think there's a lot of through lines in terms of um, you know the horror of genocide and colonialism. And so we um, that's why Lucas brought me onto the podcast is because I'm very good at bringing things down um, <laughs> to to the grim level. Um, yeah. Yeah. The thesis, thank you, Josie, for introducing the premise of our podcast. I would have forgotten to do that. Um, yeah, the <laughs> yeah premise imagine is that... if somebody else like would have forgotten to introduce who you were <laughs> when bringing you out. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> it, it's, it's laid back here. We're having a fun time. Um, but yeah, the premise of our podcast is that all Australian culture is in some way haunted uh, by you know, past atrocities or you know, on, the ongoing atrocity of colonialism and or present day atrocities like, you know, the illegal detention of asylum seekers. There's, there's so many facets of Australian culture that seem like forced mirth. Like, you know, there's yeah. this like, oh, be happy, don't question it. And also because Australia is a very young colony, there is this attempt to like sort of, I don't want to say culture jam, but like force traditions into being. Yes, uh, yes, fuck it. Um, you, you may have come across uh, on the weekend a lot of Australians tweeting about like democracy sausage and a uh, friend of the show, Ben McClay, made an excellent tweet about how a lot of, you know, it feels like a lot of Australians are ty- trying to make democracy sausage our whole personality because the all that's left of the national personality is racism. So, <laughs> yeah. so we're taking these like traditions that haven't existed for very long, acting like they're extremely sacred and there's this defensiveness anytime you question any of these parts of Australian culture. Like if you... Like, if you make fun of Hey Hey, It's Saturday, which was our first episode, some people do get very upset, even though that show is extremely horrible. Like, Objectively racist. Objectively racist, sexist, like some pedophilia at one point, which we discussed in the episode. So, so yeah, it's not, it's not always going to be us shitting on Australian culture. There's stuff that we celebrate as well. The episode that dropped today is all about the show Bluey, but chiefly about uh, weird Bluey fan theories. And I kind of melted Josie's brain about that a little bit. So, so yeah, please check that out. Um, so, yeah, but most of our episodes are going to be focusing on, like, complicated or bad stuff to do with Australian culture, history, etc. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was do hope the democracy a... sausage thing doesn't take... Sorry, Nicole, I talked over you again. <laughs> That's all right. I'll just glare at you until you stop. Um, yeah, I actually had a whole joke prepped where I was going to say, oh, it's interesting listening to your show coming from a country where we have absolutely zero problematic policies or, <laughs> or uh, pop culture or anything. And then, as you alluded to, clearly that's not true. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, in mm-hmm. fact, there's a, um, there's a podcast I listen to. I don't listen to much true crime, but Canadian true crime is one I listen to. And it's actually a woman from Brisbane who lives in Canada. Um, and she talks up, uh, about a lot of um, true crime cases and so much of it, there's so many through lines, especially, especially with like um, missing and murdered indigenous women. Like it's just mm-hmm. the same shit. Um, yeah. So anyway, Grim, it's me. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. Thank you for bringing the Grim. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Um, on that note, shall uh, what do you folks bring up the uh, shit cunts who lost their seat on the weekend? Thing? Am I able to do that? Or yeah, it's here coming. we go. Here we and go. I just want to uh, say that I hope that uh, the democracy sausage does not take off, uh, kind of as you do. But my reasoning being that that's the the well, it's a working title of the political erotica I'm writing right now. <laughs> so stomp on my plan. There. Democracy sausage, beautiful. Look, there'll look, there'll be an episode about that, probably more broadly about like sausages in bread, because it is just like a popular snack at like the hardware mega stores we have here, and it is also just like the easy. I'm having people easy. over. What food can I make that? Yeah, and it is yummy, but yeah, it's you know I don't know. Yummy They're fine. Yeah. There is this yeah. There's there's like a fixation on them. And uh, no, we we will get to that episode at some point because yeah I have I have stuff on that. <laughs> right, sorry, Josie, please uh please take okay. us with your delightful presentation. All right, here we are. Don't mind me, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just gonna grab something. Yeah, that's all right. All right, <laughs> Trevor Evans. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. I'm he's gay. Um, I I mention that because he he makes a point of it. Um, every time uh, he talks. Um. In fact, I only learned that he was gay at my very first Pride Parade uh, in 2019. And I remember my friend and I, Esther, were looking at each other. Like, a few people in the crowd were like, he's gay? Because, like, 
this dude so to give context to overseas people the liberal party despite the name are our conservative party um and trevor evans is part of the uh liberal party yeah conservative party um and at that pride uh he was like you know i from memory we had just gone through um we had just introduced marriage equality into australia but that happened through the most traumatic way possible um through basically uh they conducted a nationwide survey of whether or not we think that marriage equality should be a thing and Mm -hmm. um people took their lives from it because of all the campaigning around it pushing yes pushing no um anyway trevor evans he always threatened to cross the floor um and basically like you know vote opposite to his party's position but he never did it um so Mm -hmm. a lot of people in the australian queer community don't like trevor evans and therefore we didn't clap for him at pride and he said he had a jeb bush please clap moment uh where he's like come on guys yeah and we're all just like "Ah, fuck off um and yeah as i as i noted there he refuses to stand up for um trans kids in um different um in many ways and uh as recently as last week just before the election someone posted uh that he sent out an email um and it was titled LGBT targeted male, uh, obviously yeah. tailoring his messaging oh, no. um, to his audience. And I just think that's beautiful. Um, next slide, please. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. <laughs> uh, and my little trivia about Trevor Evans um, is that in 2016, he used a fake Congress person's bio as his own bio um on his website and this was discovered through uh someone who worked for buzzfeed at the time because you can see here he changed his name from trevor to tim on his own fucking website (laughs) no um and yeah he did not grow up Uh, (laughs) that's no that's very true um but yeah next please so he needs so to figure good. out I, how just, to I like edit the, his stuff. The brashness of it, like mixed with the laziness of that move so much. I know, right? It's I really the energy it. of how we do this show. Incredibly brash, incredibly lazy. Yes. <laughs> um, even, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Also, even though like you know our show is like quite quite slapdash, I at least double check things and you know make edits and posts and stuff like that. It's just like. Come on, man. Like You're consistent about what your name is. Um, yes, which... <laughs> yes. Simple things. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yes. This uh, asshole. Yeah, this asshole, KKK. Christina Kersher Keneally, uh, she just lost her seat. She is actually in the Labour Party, which is the left-wing party. Um, she lost to an independent uh, woman, I believe. Uh, she's a sepo. Do you folks know what a sepo is? No. Is, it, is it like a turf? No, a sepo. Okay, so sepo means American, um, because a yank can using rhyming slang septic tank. Oh, and, I didn't know that. And then sepo septic tank. Um, yeah, so she's a sepo from Ohio. Um, she was a parachute candidate, so she's quite wealthy, um, and, oh, am I robot voicing? I hear you great. Okay. No, you sound good to me. Okay. Um, so, um, basically she isn't, she doesn't have many or any connections to the community that she was running in, and, um, and she has a cop son, so two things that people don't like. Um. Mm -hmm. And she lost her seat recently, even though um, Labor had always held that seat. Um, And she's not likable for many reasons, but one of them is that she's staunchly um, pro-locking up asylum seekers. Um, And as you can see here, she tries to walk this line of both advocating for uh, the family that I've shown on the slide here. They... (laughs) Um, We're living in a community in Australia. Um, I believe one, if not both of the girls were born here and then they were sent back. They're still in detention right now. Um, 
and uh, she used them as a prop to be like, vote for me. Meanwhile, this tweet down the bottom here is only from, I believe, the 14th of May, where she believes that uh, people should pay for their own illegal incarceration. Uh, so she's a cunt, and I hate her very much, and I'm so glad she's gone. Um, some aren't, though, so next slide, please. Yeah, this is this is unbelievable. This I was so mad about this last night. Uh, my my um, I don't think this supports my animations. I had some star wipes included. That's how I spent most of my morning is relearning oh, no. how to do star wipes. I know, I know. Oh. Um, and so basically, this is not part of the Labor Party, but people who really supported uh, her. Um, we've we're now in the midst of this uh, Bertha conspiracy as. It pertains to the person who won her seat. So um, the independent Dye Lee, who, I believe her name is. Yes. Um, she's from, she was a refugee at the age of 12 from South Vietnam. Um, we have a law at the moment that states that you can't be a dual citizen in Australia and hold office. Um, so some weirdos are trying to prove that she actually should not uh, be holding office currently. Um, but as you can see here, South Vietnam, a fucking simple Google, existed from 1955 to 1975. Where is she going to get her documents from proving that she's from South Vietnam and that she is still a citizen of South Vietnam? Not to mention there's also legal precedent to show that um, uh, one of our other people who lost their seat, um, his mom was a uh, Hungarian Jewish refugee and she was deemed stateless, so therefore her son was not a dual citizen. Anyway, just real fucking weird Bertha conspiracy shit happening um, from supposed progressive people. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, we should, so bad. Bad. <laughs> Sorry, we should say the main source of this are like weird labor psychos on Twitter who have like gotten steadily, steadily more insane over the last couple of years. Uh, I have muted or blocked most of them. And uh, yeah, trips. they're just... Yep, drips, because I don't know, for some reason that the teardrop emoji kind of became a symbol of theirs. I don't know. I don't personally remember where it came Water from. Water usage, I think, from memory. Uh, okay. Anyway, they are, it's, they've really asked themselves as like quite far right members of the Labour Party. I don't know. Their politics are kind of inconsistent. But uh, yeah, they've really gone just like, you know, extremely racist over, you know, this Bertha conspiracy. And uh, they fucking suck. And I, I hope the... The beer they get crowdfunded uh, gives them the shits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah, sorry, folks. I, I meant for this to be more funny than it is, but I'm just getting mad. <laughs> it's, like, it's just so much fucking racism in this country. No, it's Look, good. Are... We pride ourselves in jarring tonal shifts. So, so, so like her actual situation, if I understand correctly, because I was briefly seeing this earlier today or yesterday, was... Like, she was definitely born in what was then South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. She definitely fled as a refugee. Mm -hmm. And any other, from any other country, you would just, like, renounce your citizenship to run. But because that country was basically removed from and absorbed into North Vietnam to become Vietnam, like, mm -hmm. there's there's no way for her to even do that paperwork, right? Nope. Yeah, she's she's stateless, you know, or you know, she would have been stateless when she came at the time. Her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, and so it's kind of like she lived in multiple refugee camps in, I believe, Hong Kong and um, the Philippines. Right. So she was stateless. <laughs> yeah. So as an analogy, it's sort of like when I had that Twitter account that I created where I forgot the password, but then the email to reset it was through my university, and if you don't use your email after you graduate they just delete your email so i can't recover mm -hmm. the account i can't delete it i can't do anything it just sits there so yep. really i i empathize yep. with her a lot <laughs> we're in the same <laughs> shared lived experience same same yeah look look the one funny part of this uh, not to end on like a really downer note is that christina keneally is this rich asshole who got like parachuted into an electorate she didn't belong to uh, a community she didn't belong to and Labour thought this was a good idea and they are completely surprised that she got her ass handed to her by a local candidate who was well liked in the community. Yeah, um, and this is, sorry. Oh, sorry, I believe uh, the community, I can't remember the name of the electorate, but I believe it has like a pretty large Vietnamese community and, you know, Dai Li being a member of that community was 
no one should have been shocked that they like you know trusted her more than this like random wanker who was teleported in yeah i think it's i think that it speaks to the inherent racism that you think that Fowler, thank you Fowler, yeah thank you um thank you Alfred. that like um that the people of Fowler have no connection to where they live and that they're too silly to recognize when someone is there just for political gain and not for um their own constituents um yeah and and so i don't know anything about the person who won and her policies and i suspect that we probably don't agree on a lot but i do think it's very mm. fucking cool that people are like you're not doing this and and to be and to be clear um the other person who was supposed to run for labor in fowler was a another um asian australian woman and they chose a white um a white woman over her uh to run so that's also important context um yeah but yeah I like also that this entirely hinges upon like this very rigid rule that you just can't be a dual citizen and hold, is it any office? Um, I don't know about any, just, I, I know that it's certainly federal. Um, I think it's, it, I think it speaks to, um, I mean, obviously it's problematic in so many ways, but just to bring up sort of a, something that maybe other overseas folks can relate to is that, um, I guess there are anti-Semitism is certainly a, a little bit different in Australia um, in that a lot of, uh, I, from what I can see, anti-Semitism is more rife in America. And there's this thing about dual loyalty to is the state of Israel and um, I guess America. And mm -hmm. there's like, oh, well, how do you know that this politician is working in the interest of America when they're also a Jew? And it's sort of like this weird, like, skepticism of, like, someone being tricksy if they've got dual loyalty. And it's like, it's just really outdated in my opinion. But, um, yeah. There, uh, there have been people who've suggested in Australia that it is just, like, a way to discourage, like, you know, non-white people from holding, mm -hmm. like electoral positions yes. yeah uh yeah so um <laughs> sorry um one of our viewers at the moment is um my beloved jew friend dan um and he said he's a massage agent so just just for clarification um thank, yeah. thank you for your service dan <laughs> thank you oh no no thank you, thank you. please teach us all krav maga the shittiest martial art <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Okay. Next, please. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm gonna put that I... one in the notes for uh for another erotic idea because we need to have one for every episode. I'm but a it's gonna be agent. Like... <laughs> well, yeah. See, it'll be it'll be someone who's like you know they they enter this situation under the pretext that they work for the Israeli special forces, but they actually bring out some oil and they're like, oh, didn't you hear? I'm a massage agent, and then you know <laughs> things as beautiful. You imagine. <laughs> Guy who misheard Basad agent. <laughs> also, oh, that's my favorite new guy. <laughs> also, I seem to upset Josie a little bit by saying Krav Maga sucks, but you could incorporate that into a sex scene because oh. I believe Krav Maga is all about like using whatever's at hand to just kill the person. So, you know, you can incorporate that into a sex scene. Just like. Oh, no, you didn't upset me. Okay, good, good. Okay, because Krav Maga does <laughs> I suck. I did Taekwondo. I I... Taekwondo. It's cool. It has high kicks. Supremacy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so the next one is Craig Kelly. Um, I'm going to quote someone from Twitter for this one. Uh, UAP, so that means United Australian Party, um, lead candidate, anti-vax Facebook star, and king of the one-finger typing boomers, Craig <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> you know the one. You know the one. Uh, has lost his old seat of Hughes, getting around 7% of the vote. Unlike everything Kelly believes, you couldn't make this up, folks. Uh, Chuff with love, <laughs> 2022. For context, Chuff means marijuana, pot, etc. Um, so, yeah, and this is a picture of him being egged. It wasn't a successful egging. Um, the egg did not break, but he was still humiliated, and that's what matters. Um, next, please. Yeah, did it's anyone a, get egged this year? Or... Uh, no, just Craig, Craig, Craig Kelly got egged this time around, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, um, sorry, just reading the slide. Yeah, yeah sorry, I, I misspelled Craig Kelly. 
Uh, and then I decided I should care Craig enough to. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, he chased, he changed his Facebook banner, uh, to Paw Patrol because he thought it would trigger the leftist, communist, gay, transhumanists. Um, we didn't care. So did, so did he, like, have a post? than anything. Sorry? (laughs) Did he have a post saying that that was his intention there, or was he just, like, that was just... Oh, I have no idea. Someone told me about this. I I, am not on Facebook. Okay. I'm not a boomer. (laughs) I, I treat Facebook like a poisonous room I go in every now and then to delete my cringy 2012 posts and then I and see which of my friends have lost their fucking minds. Yeah, you gotta hold your breath when you go in or else it'll, you'll inhale the poison. Yeah. <laughs> or, exactly. Also, sorry, I joined our suburbs Facebook page. I occasionally go in there to laugh at the freaks and send screenshots of it to my wife and we laugh about like, holy fuck, we live in the weirdest fucking suburb. Okay, do you folks have like community Facebook groups where you are? Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's, that's like the intuition. Yeah, so yeah, I had to leave mine because I started getting into fights because they would take pictures of people who were clearly mentally unwell and talk about calling the cops. And oh. I started going off on people and then I was like, for self-care reasons, I'm leaving Facebook. <laughs> so. Um, your, your suburb, Josie, I know we discussed this earlier, I used to shoot real estate videos in that suburb. Um, as a result of that, I had to occasionally do drone videography, photography, the only times I've been shouted at for flying a drone have been in in Josie's suburb. Like I had a lady go off at me and say, tell mm. me not to fly above her house. There are no rules about that. I was not being like weird. I was like, give me his up in the air. Anyway, a lot of cops <laughs> in Josie's suburb. <laughs> you, you weren't wearing a trench coat and operating your little drone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't going like, hey, 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 hey. like, you know, yeah, I was doing normal, like, normal, like, trying to track, you know, I'm really good at, like, fucking, you know, moving and tracking around a house. Oh, but, yeah, like... I'm good at moving too, mate. All right. <laughs> no, to <prep. laughs> I can run real fast. No, I can't. That's a lie. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I live on, like, the worst house in the best street, and so there's lots of rich bitches around me. Um, yep, yep, but yeah, so Craig Kelly, Facebook, next please. We're nearly done. Sorry, I talk a lot. No, this is real. <laughs> um, I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Uh, and a bit of Craig Kelly trivia is that he is a huge anti-vaxxer, believes in ivermectin. Um, and uh, I had to go on the way back machine for this. But he emailed a whole bunch of, like, people from the Therapeutic Goods Association um, and linked them a study, and he he linked them to a local file off his computer. And that's that's just my little bit of... Yeah. Gentleman88, I think we have a fascist in the crowd. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, uh, once you start blowing up like we do, you're going to start attracting the fascist, and they're going to come in there with their... You know, their nice scarves and their, you know, advanced makeup tutorials. Fashion yeah. shorts for fashionistas, right? Sorry? Fashionistas. Fashion shorts for fashionistas, right? <laughs> fashionistas, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Sorry, I'm one of those people who has not political on their, like, hinge profile. Oh, shirt. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it means that you are apolitical. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> next, please. Uh, Eric, is it Abetz? Yeah, Eric Abetz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bad dude. So again, it's kind of ties everything together. Super horrible policies. Um, yes, gentle Ben, you're right. You did give me both of these Craig Kelly facts, and it makes me think that maybe you're fascist if you know so much <laughs> about him. Um, uh, yeah, uniformly bad dude. His great uncle was an SS officer and convicted war criminal. Um, his grandfather was also a member of the Nazi party. He got voted out. That's all I have to say, but yeah, pretty fucking cooked. Anyway, I chose this photo because Australian Human Rights Commission and knowing that, um, he comes from fascist stock, um, was just very funny to me. It's, it's funny because people talk about how Queensland is, you know, quite a conservative state and is in some ways, but like Tasmania, I think is probably like worse than us in a fashion. Like I think, were they... (laughs) Were they the last Weird. state to decriminalize, you know, homosexuality? Like, uh, so yeah, be... from memory, but he's so Tasmania could have some really good, like, 
some really good stuff and then be really um, outdated in other ways. I guess like everywhere. I mean, again, mm. Victoria is the home of Melbourne, which is like, you know, the the New York of Australia, but there was a 210% increase of indi- incarcerated Indigenous women over the past 10 years. So, Oof. yes. So we can't really single out any one state. Every every state in this in this yeah. country is kind of shit in some way and territory. Yeah. yeah. Annex, please. Mm, relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria is the home of Melbourne. Fuck. Uh, yeah, Tim Wilson. Okay. Um, this is because apparently Australians don't like to see uh, many in excellence. Um, so Tim Wilson, he just got voted out. He advocated for the recognition of the Armenian genocide, which we still haven't done here. Um, and uh, but he still has shitty policies and takes the worst fucking food but f- photos of my life. I hope he um, increases uh, with that now that he doesn't have a job. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is the moment that I found out that he was an Armenian Australian. Um, and it's cause he posted this photo, which is dog <laughs> shit, objectively dog shit. He does look bad. He's like, he doesn't look this horrible all the time, but this <laughs> looks young, but why do you look like uh, uncle Festa heart eyes? Just like, I was crying for ages <laughs> and then just like lighting. And also my deeply recessed Armenian <laughs> eyes. What the fuck, dude? Wow. It just really tickles me. I don't know. Just like, I fucking love it. <laughs> Why do you look like Very one of the villains from Dark fact. City? But I feel uh, like this <laughs> ad hoc lighting setup is doing the same thing to my eyes, but. <laughs> Are you on many? <laughs> that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it just oh, really yeah. fucking tickled me. No, your lighting is lovely, Kelly. It's a, it's nice and soft. It's good. We want to avoid harsh shadows like that. So, you know. <laughs> Big soft source of light, diffused. Uh, he's absolutely <laughs> standing under some down lighting, so that's reinforcing. Like, you know, this is the exact lighting that you know the famous shot of Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. It's called monster lighting. <laughs> yeah, like when you first showed this, I thought that was like a Photoshop someone did. I was like, oh, they kind of like you know, it's like when they shrink Charlie Kirk's face, but it's just they've made him extraordinarily. <laughs> just... Is he maybe doing it on purpose idiot. to like look intimidating and try and like? intimidate people into voting for him you'd think so but i think this is just <laughs> sorry charlie kirk just looks like that naturally Beautiful. i watched a video of him recently the motherfucker's face is so small like i it's... do not get how people watch him and take him seriously okay so this brings me back oh Tom Walker. yeah that too um so this reminds me of uh i think it was through this line of conversation that i started making fun of how Jaylee, uh, Jaylee, Haley Joel Osment has like a tiny face. And then someone in that server said they listened to the podcast that I was in the server of and that they might be here. And I died in that ass. I was like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> so, he knew, he's got to know he has a little face. Like, I'm sure he's heard this. He's just has a tiny face. It's okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, next please. Oh man, he totally does. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like that uh, little bits, little bits. <laughs> from, from Rick and Morty. <laughs> um, sorry, I talk so much. Um, and so next, we don't know that she's lost her seat. I saw one report saying oh. that she's more likely than Wait, not. You to still keep don't her know. Seat. No. I feel like it's been uncertain for like 48 hours now, or maybe I just spend way too much time on Australian podcast discords, but. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, I think there's like postal votes and stuff like that um, that we have to consider. But um, yeah, so Pauline Hanson, whether or not she's lost her seat, I do want to make fun of her. Uh, Very bad person just always been horrible, helped abol- abolish the federal family court, um, which has nothing to do with the fact that her son is a family court dad, a fucking big loser. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, she's, like, fascist. Um, and from memory, her son's Jew... Uh, no, her son isn't Jewish. Her ex-husband's Jewish, which actually... Anyway, um, if you're doing the blood quantum thing, I guess that makes the sun half. No, 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 no. I don't do that. It's just like weird. Depends who you're asking. Matrilineal shit. Mm. Um, 
Uh, anyway, one time I accidentally agreed with a Pauline Hanson billboard because she was arguing that um, there should be faster internet speeds all around Australia, which, duh, especially to rural communities, duh. Mm -hmm. And then I went home and Googled and it turned out that she wanted that because she found out that Australians were losing due to lag to overseas gamers, which obviously means Asian gamers. She's very anti-Asian. Um, mm. And I was just Jesus. like, I hate that we got to the same place from very opposite things. Um, oh, so it, Pauline it, Hansen it, is, it, by the sounds of it, like she's using her um, pretend interest in like these internet speeds for, you know, the gamers so that she can really just use it as like a smoke screen for racism. Yeah, so it, it she so she's a fake from gamer a girl, is place. what you're telling me. <laughs> she, she, yeah, she might even be. Yeah, I think she's she's the cat girl as well. Um, fake gamer girl, real racist girl. Look, yeah, it real occurred, racist. It occurred to me that she was probably trying to tap into the then two years old Gamergate sentiment. I think it got to her after oh, like two I, I years that like that. oh. Hey, Pauline, like, it turns out a bunch of gamers are, like, racist shitheads, so, like, maybe you should try appealing to, to gamers. So, I, and also, I mean, it occurred to me, this is from 2016, so that was when, like, a lot of reactionary stuff was popping off. Um, yeah. pa Pauline Hansen getting back into the Senate um, was kind of what galvanized me and, like, radicalized me as a dirtbag leftist. So, so we do all owe Pauline Hansen that. I just, like, lost my job from a tech startup Pauline Hansen getting elected. I was just like, fuck this, this country sucks. So it kind of- Because to be clear, this woman had been a politician like during the nineties. Um, and she was a fucking huge fascist, racist piece of shit then. And then she was out of politics for, for quite a while. And then to see her get back in, we're like, oh, this isn't good. This is no, bad. No. This <laughs> yeah. fucking sucks. Next please. I like so the theory something. that she was going on to, like, that she was trying to latch on to that, like, really toxic online gamer community. Like, she that went to her nephew. To she went to her nephew's house and, like, heard them, like, yelling racial slurs while he was playing Call of Duty. And she's like, those are my people. <clears throat> oh, what's uh, this? I'm yeah. listening now. <laughs> Untapped voters? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, no, uh, like, you want your internet speed to be a bit faster? <laughs> So, so we should be clear, she sounds like shit as well. She sounds like she's about uh, to cry every time she talks. Yeah, which is funny because she's a fascist and you can make fun of fascists however you want. Um, yep. So um, Pauline Hanson trivia. So Uluru is the uh, is a sacred site that people uh, were climbing for many, many years. Um, it is now closed to tourists climbing it, thank fuck. Um, mm -hmm. but Pauline Hanson, before she, before it was closed, she insisted that they should keep it open and she went for a climb herself. Then she got stuck and said it was quite dangerous and that maybe it should be closed after all. Um, <laughs> welcome so, Conrad Pauline. Yeah. yeah. It's only a problem Wait, so that's the that second time she came directly. to the right conclusion for the wrong no, reasons. You're, you're quite right on that. Like it, this whole, it only, it, it's only a problem if it affects me personally. It kind of goes back to my Tim Wilson thing about him advocating for like the recognition of the Armenian genocide. Well, he's Armenian. And it's like, I wonder if he would be arguing for that if he wasn't. So, um, mm. but yeah. And anyway, uh, Pauline Hansen, I can't like, like Henry Kissinger and people like that. I mean, to be fair, I, She's more of like, I guess, a stochastic terrorist, I would argue, in my opinion, in Minecraft, um, rather than like, you know, actually performing war crimes. Um, but she's caused so much harm. I can't wait to drink to her death. Yeah, yeah, straight up. And also, I mean, like, I don't think, I don't know if the Christchurch shooter, like, had any real connection to her, but like, he certainly had connections to like, far right wing stuff, but certainly the, the ambient racism in, in Australia is absolutely someone that pushed guys like that to do atrocities. And yeah, she's a big part of stoking that. So uh, fuck off Pauline Hanson. I hope she loses a seat. Yeah, we, we can hope, we live in hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have no it. comment on this comment, but. Oh yeah, sorry, she's, uh, yeah, she's got COVID. So, so here's ah! hoping. That's. Yeah, <laughs> I I have a my conspiracy theory is that she's vaccinated. So mm. 
I suspect that as well because don't you have to be to like sit in parliament? Like, so, I don't to, like, know. Sit... Yeah. But and yeah, um, but yeah, that's it. Anyway, we did vote out some shit cunts, and that is good. We take what wins we can. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank you for putting this together, Josie. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I put in so much hard work, clearly. <laughs> I, I had to get our production team to pull this name because she reminds me so like she's she Pauline Hansen is far worse, but it's so much bleaker what happens in our Senate because you're appointed and not elected. Uh, you just don't lose your seat. What? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah we just have an appointed Senate. So you just it's it gets it's Senate built entirely out of nepotism. Um, it's, it's probably not healthy. that different from the UK House of Lords, but it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like no one really likes it, but no one ever really gets around to doing anything about it. But well, there's like a significant who... amount. Like we could probably do a whole slideshow on this. Um, but there are enough uh, like people who. So sometimes like the the federal conservative party will have some sort of conscience and be like, yeah, okay, the the remarks made by this person were inappropriate. And so what they do is they kick you out of the party, so you just become an independent senator because you can't lose your seat. So there's an entire like uh, caucus of I think it's like ten senators who are like the ten you know people who were so they're just such massive shit cunts that they got kicked out of the conservative party um, and they're just like the this like little like cabal of like two yeah, like, two, just act as they wish. two fascists like... for the conservative party people they're their own little like independent caucus in our senate it's it's amazing our senate is so cool yeah there Who's you go there's bitch? Lynn Bayak. <laughs> She's, oh. she's sort of our Pauline Hansen. I don't know. She, mostly awful shit. She said residential schools were good. She can fall no, into a volcano. No, 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 Wait, sorry. That's the... They're like kind of the... There was it, That blew up recently because discovered that they were like... They had mass graves or something like that. Is that the one? They, they yeah, are constantly keep... finding more and more mass graves. It's real... I think this was on the heels of one of the mass grave findings where she was doing that thing of like, you know, we never talk about the good things that happened. Oh, oh. so um, it was I've, been the... sitting... oh. I've been there's a new um, podcast that's come out um, that uh, is still being released every week and it's interviewing. It's just about one school um, and it's giving me sort of more insight into like we had residential schools here. Um, but yeah, sort of giving the, um, Canada insight to it. And they were quoting whoever the prime minister or president was at the time in Canada. And they, like, they called it like the native question. Like, oh the yeah, that classic phrase Sorry, you use. I just, yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> the I, word I had... question after an ethnicity, nothing good ever comes. Wow. Jesus so Christ. like the fact that anyone has like, could, she would know that. Like, she would know that very well. And oh, she still know. thinks that it was a good thing. Like, it wasn't for improving education outcomes. It wasn't for any of that. It was genocide. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Sorry. I get worked yeah. up. No, no Perfect worries. time That's... for a jarring tonal shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, wait, 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 what you were you going to say? Oh, I was going to just uh, feed into that and say, like, you, I, you guys talk about on your show about... Um, how in Australia there's kind of this like, you know, that that same sort of like jokey, like free loving or like free loving, like um like happy go lucky, like, oh, we can take any joke and we're just like a we're always laughing or whatever. And that's something that I've always had a problem with is the um Canadians are so nice. Yes. And oh Canada's such a nice country and nothing ever but nothing bad ever happens in Canada. Well one of uh actually one of our previous guests um uploaded a thing to Twitter where Someone in my city got yelled at for speaking Tagalog while they were walking down the street. So Spe- racism is Sorry, can you very say that real. Again? Like speaking what? Pe- so they were speaking Tagalog with their family. Oh, um, wow, okay. While they were walking down the street, and they just got screamed at by some lady that decided that she needed to insert her opinion yeah. in the worst yeah. possible yeah. way. So it's the like more, you know, the more yeah. relaxed a sort of Western country like seems, the more it's like, no, 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 they're just cops and they're like psycho. They're relaxed I... to their racism, I think. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. friend of the show, Olivia, was tweeting the other day about how uh, they were standing next to a nice old grandma and then they had a look at their phone, at the old lady's phone, and 
the old lady was typing out some screed against a black family or something like that. So, so oh. yeah, uh, you, yep, yep. You can encounter like lovely middle-aged people who just have like the shittiest opinions. And I actually found the tweet that kind of one of the many things that like slammed together to create this podcast. It was a by Twitter user Tiger Web about how like Australians love to present that we're like easygoing, laid back larrikins, that we're irreverent, but in reality, we're all cops. Mm -hmm. and I know I've like read something like that on the podcast, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's uh, interesting to know that Canada has a similar thing. That, like, mm -hmm. no, no, we are actually like, you know, we love to joke until the joke's on us. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We're just goofy, fun loving people. We drink beer and we play hockey and we're like, everyone's welcome. And then, mm. yeah. yeah. Until yeah. someone's First walking off, down the street and, and something that they're saying. Sorry. No, those, are both, those are both noble activities, but go on. Oh, yeah, no, I was just kind of say, like, um, I think the stance of, a, of Australian Gothic, at least, is, like, it's not self-flagellation to talk about this. Like, if we want to improve anything, we just have to be honest about it. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, I finally broke Nicole, apparently. <laughs> I have this effect on people. <laughs> but it it is funny how like exactly the same it is because I was just remembering this uh this like comment from it was just like people on Reddit doing the like Canadians are nice thing but they were like yeah every Australian I've ever met has been the most chilled out person I'm like well yeah you met backpackers and they're all just yeah. like working at a ski lift like yeah I think it was like I had that was like a week after I was just seeing this uh. It was just one of those many like race riot protests that happened in Australia that we do not have time to get into. Because uh, mm -hmm. we, we do have to... Sorry, I'm yeah. Just gonna, I'm just going to let this comment breathe. It's good. Let, yeah. let, it, let it percolate. <laughs> oh, ooh, wow. I have never heard of that. That's fucking terrifying. Mm. I believe some of my like first fleet ancestors were prison guards. So, yep, yep. Can't confirm that. <laughs> oh, no, mine were all crims. <laughs> also, the fact that a lot of those That definitely criminals... doesn't come through, does it? <laughs> if I'm Podcast not, like... incoming. If I remember correctly, a lot of the like criminals sent to Australia were like Irish people who are who their crime was just like being Irish, D stealing um, bread so they don't starve to death. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So um, the so I my Jewish an ancestry came here, I think for economic reasons, but um, otherwise, like the Anglo side of my family came here. I checked their ancestry records, and they stole sweetmeats. Which I think was like just Buns? like lollies. They s no, no, I, I don't know what sweet meats are. Sweet meats, I think, are refer to like certain like uh, refers to offal. I think it's like kidneys, the tongue, liver, things like that. They got transported for stealing fucking tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Look, back in the day, that was they were considered nice cuts of meat. Like you know, it's that weird thing that happens where like food trends happen. Like back in the day, you know, like you know. In some circles, like, kidney is still considered, like, you know, high class, even though, like, you know, I like eating kidneys sometimes, but, like, my wife is, like, only when I'm not home because I hate oh, the smell of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So Okay, sweet meats are very much candy, candied fruits. Okay, so little sweeties. Oh, okay. okay, little sweeties. Oh, okay, um, okay. Sweet yeah. meats is also a draft title of an erotic I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> Democracy sausage and sweet meats. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, it's like All a right. it's like a super duo. So anyway, um, thank you everyone for enduring my little my little rant. No worries. No, no. It's good. Well, it's the least effort so we've ever had to put in, and I think that should be the new precedent. That is good for me. I get, I need to stop doing this. I do this every time. I'm like, yeah, that oh. was great, and then I keep reading things online. It's like oh, you yeah, shouldn't yeah. do that anymore. I think I'm doing <laughs> I think I'm doing anti-Italian racism all the time because I go mwah, mwah, all the time. <laughs> Also, look, uh, this gesture for scuba diving means you're okay, so you can just say that you're okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean Heil Hitler? It I mean, it probably does, but I, yeah, I didn't hear, I haven't, I'm not sure I've met any scuba divers who are online enough to be like, so hey, what do we think about, like, this gesture being co-opted by, like, weird internet psychos? And you should just do, like, a, a shaka. Oh, that is, that means, like, you've seen something awesome, you're happy, oh, which is okay, difficult because, okay, like, good. The, <laughs> the trouble... The trouble is thumbs up means like we need to go up we need to go up usually because there's like an emergency or something like that so that so this means like you're okay i'm breathing fine my mask isn't flooded everything like that anyway this is uh, welcome I'm to scuba dive. 
<laughs> that's a perfect right. transition into our next segment, which is Scuba Diving 101, led by Lucas. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, don't, don't follow me on scuba diving. I'll get you killed. <laughs> my ma- look, I went scuba diving at the start of the year. My mask was flooding the whole time. I kept like using all my air. I kept being the first one to be sent back to the boat. Everyone else was like a really pro. I think it was, I hadn't shaved. So like it was creating a gap between my mask and my skin. So like water was flooding into my mask. I was having to constantly like hold my mask and go like, like purge the water. Anyway, it was fine. I saw some cool fish. I saw some nudibranchs. So they're like, <gasps> yeah. yeah. I saw a, the one guy who had a like sick camera rig. It was like, yo, I need to find like cool nudibranchs. Nudibranchs are like sea slugs. But they look <laughs> wild. They're like super brightly colored. Uh, yeah, I saw like a pretty blue one on like a on like a brain coral, and I was just like, mm-hmm. like trying <laughs> to get the dude's attention. Nudibranchs is the name of my next erotica novel. Oh, what <laughs> that behind you? Sorry? Who's your dog? Who's your dog? Oh, sorry, that's Luna? Yeah, yeah. You may have heard oh, her go... Sweetie. Yeah, you may have heard her. My my wife came home before. Luna is part... She's part Husky, part Rottweiler. And she has the Rottweiler, like, vocalizations where they, like, talk. And so you may have heard her come to the top of the stairs and go... Rawr, 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 like, and not chew back <laughs> and gorgeous. Noises. I love and that. Just like, Speaking of dogs, Kelly is doggedly <laughs> hounding me to... <laughs> Trans- transition or uh, move into what do we call Please it? Do. Move into the we'll question jar. Talking. Pivot to the question jar. Well, that's what I was going for <laughs> many minutes ago with jarring tonal shift. Oh, oh did not catch sorry, that. Sorry, sorry. We we can shut the fuck up. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was like waiting. I was like I had so many puns lined up, and then the subject kept changing, and I was so interested. I was like, speaking of diving, why don't we dive into that question jar? It's such um, a good one. I need to. <laughs> edit out she got to use it. it. <laughs> No, it's I good. Really, to... the only person who has a bad time as a result is Josh, and you're like, who cares? It's only, like, the big finale of his story. Like, fuck him, fuck him, kick him off. <laughs> Aww. Someone who has to edit, I, I, I'm i sorry, I'm just making all this extra work. Josh lives <laughs> matter. Oh, we do not edit for length, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, okay, here's for... the transition. Yeah, so... We came up with this gimmick and we're like, this will be so good when we have to fill time because we're going to have to fill so much time and we always run out of time to do any of our gimmicks. Um, but I I don't know. Um, it's a cool concept. It's entirely Nicole's idea. And <laughs> um, so basically the idea is this is our question jar and it's full of questions. So um, if, it, if it were one guest, what we would say is... Uh, you choose the like one at a time if you want to draw a question from the jar like in this case your remote i'll pull it for you uh and then you have to an- you have to answer the question if you draw it um and then if you want to draw another one then you answer another one you can do as many as you want the number of questions you answer is the number of questions you get to add to the jar for the next guest Ooh, i like that so Ooh, i would say okay. this just simultaneously applies to both of you i, I think okay okay uh, yeah give us a question yeah Okay, so we'll, I don't know. We'll treat you as a team of two, and if you, if one of you answers it, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. The first question: Have you ever had an experience that you would describe as sublime? Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Josie, you can take this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I talk about this on my other podcast, "A Hill to Die On," in one of our Patreon episodes. Um. I love in the hotter subtropical warmer months to have a cold shower and I cut up a mango and I eat a mango in the shower. Um, and huh. it's just, it's just a great time. People think it's disgusting, but actually it's like you can go to town on this mango cheek and you get all the fibers stuck in your teeth and it's okay. Cause like all of the juice, it just, you're in the shower. It's just, it's fine. It's perfectly legal. They haven't outlawed it yet. And it is <laughs> a hedonistic, beautiful experience. If you're very if you're feeling very, very hot, I would recommend getting a beautifully ripe refrigerated mango and having it in a cold shower. Coincidentally, it's also my pickup line, you know, I just wink at someone and say, Go to town on this mango cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds delicious. Oh, it's delicious. What about, I... what about you, Lucas? I, I, I got nothing. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I so I may have talked about this before. I don't know. It's a, yeah, sorry. I did talk about this on the Byron Bay episode. I'm um, going back to scuba diving talk. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know. This is kind of like a pretty normy thing. I saw a sleeping gray nurse shark and that That's was an cute. experience that was, yeah, that was an experience. That I was just like, this is so cool. And like, I was about five meters away from it. The visibility was kind of shit. We sort of saw it emerging out of the fog and we kind of like kneeled on the sand and watched it. Well, like Aww. when they sleep, they just hang there. And I was just, just like, chilling. oh my God, I'm so close to a shark. This is so cool. And yeah, that was, that was wonderful. And then I ate a mango at the bottom of the water. <laughs> Mask keeps filling I up with water. You. Yeah, uh, that's the final test. Um, sorry, one other bit of weird scuba diving trivia I've come across. Apparently, some diving agencies, uh, because I don't really have like an experience as cool as Josie's. Um, apparently, uh, some scuba diving instructors have made like a rule that only seems to apply if you're a conventionally attractive woman. That on your hundredth dive, you have to get naked un- under the water. You have to go down to the sand and like take off your suit, take off your bathing suit, no. and get it. A- yeah, and everyone has, uh, all the things I've heard are just like, no, we don't do that. That's clearly just some creepy instructor trying to like get some chick nude. That's fucked up. No. I just yeah. noticed also, that Josie and I made the exact same face as soon as you said that. <laughs> and it was perfect. Yeah. Also, I mean, like, it baffles me. And maybe it's just because I'm a new diver. But like, have you ever tried to take off a wetsuit? You're a new diver? I look like such a, no, 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 no. Just at the end of a dive, like taking off the wetsuit. It's just like, I got to get someone to help me out of it. It's like, really, it sticks to you. Like. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't... I've seen photos of people doing it, and I'm just like, mate, I think they were... I think the diving instructor just wanted to see you nude. They're like, taking mm-hmm. advantage of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't done extensive research on it, but I was just like, are you sure that's a thing? Yeah. Anyway, so... So, how about, a, how about another question from the jar? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry for uh, upsetting everyone. What's that? Sorry for upsetting everyone. My like gross no, diving stories. Is, I, no more scuba just... diving stories for Our, the podcast. I've told them. I think one of the main themes of the show is upsetting people. So, okay, good, good. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh wow, this is another sincere question. This is shocking considering the jar. Uh, who is your favorite obscure historical figure? Oh, ah, oh, um, I don't know if he's obscure, but Talleyrand. Um, he managed to kind of i think it was like maybe four or five consecutive uh french governments managed to be like on the right side and not be assassinated um i don't know i have a whole book about him uh he was just just a little sneaky guy and had a stinky leg and i like that (laughs) anyway that's just my answer sorry i'm shaking my desk uh, sorry, this is kind of contemporary and also just marks me out as a huge nerd, I'm sorry, but uh, the Chinese military strategist Zhu Ge Liang, and I principally remember him because he was my favorite character from the game Dynasty Warriors. He beat people up with a fan in that game, not historically accurate. <laughs> also, he's, he, was, he, he sat in a tent and he made war stratagems. He did a bunch of like cool, like made optical illusions to trick a bunch of horsemen into entering a maze so they couldn't like attack a bunch of military forces. I prince he's in my mind at the moment because he's the subject of an anime called Ya Boy Kong Ming, which has just started airing, where he dies in like, you know, the third century BC and gets teleported to like present day Shibuya, where he becomes a club promoter. Uh please go check out the show Ya Boy Kong Ming. It's very silly, very fun. It sounds like weeb shit. <laughs> it is. It is very much weeb shit, but but it's good, I promise. <laughs> Wait, is your show as divided on ours as on the concept of we- weeb shit? Yeah. Yeah, I'm anti weeb. Uh, yeah, yeah, I brought up anime stuff before, and Josie was just like, what the fuck are you talking about, idiot? <laughs> yeah. Maybe so, we can enough, just trade the- Josh and possibly Ian for Josie, <laughs> and then everyone's just kind of in the bubble they want to be in. Oh, God. Our podcast gets podcast gets even worse. Beautiful. I'll th- we'll do it. We'll do it. And speaking of weep shit, um, we should probably bring out our game master. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sad we didn't get any, like, really fucked up questions. We all got kind of, like, yeah. nice questions that I never know how to answer, and I resort to, like, nerdy shit. Well, <laughs> you'll have to come back again, or write two fucked up questions to put in the jar. I will. Yep, right. yep. One, it, two each. Someone wants to ask a fuck- fucked up question. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop them. Dan, now we have to wait for the 15 second delay because the stream is not such a delay. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, but uh, ah! let's all speculate wow. on what it okay. might be. Okay, damn. 
Oh, hell yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, Josie, you got anything? Well, it's... <laughs> you did the face! Oh, yeah, that was accident. This is what I mean. I accidentally... I do it by accident all the time. Sorry, I thought you were... I That's thought someone was going to prompt you to do that, but we got a rare Josie face. Ah, uh, I did it. I'm not doing it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Favourite historical fascist? Um, I've got to say, I don't really have one. Um, maybe what? Pol Pot? <laughs> he Favourite well. in what way? Because because he's not white, so it's a little bit different. I hate to say this, I got. I've just thought of one. Sorry, I hate this. <laughs> um, a little bit. Right? Oh my god, I just said that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, my favorite his favorite historical fascist. Uh, the, the artist Salvador Dali. He he was pro Franco Spain, I believe. Um, yeah, did did cool art, but he fucking sucked. Uh, fuck you, Salvador Dali. Uh, I still kind of <laughs> like the lobster phone. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe that I chose Pol Pot, the leader, and you're just like, oh, yeah, Salvador Dali. <laughs> I'm really yeah, excited can, to just clip your answer to the question, Josie, and I'm just going to, like, post it on the Hell of a Way to Die Discord, and I'll be like, yeah, man, check out our episode. It was so good. <laughs> you got to pick someone who didn't do any actual atrocities, but was just kind of complicit. That's that's how you play Who's Your Favorite Fascist, the game we just made on Born Under Punches. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that that's for sure going in the jar. <laughs> hey, sorry, everyone. <laughs> hey, anytime. We did ask. Um, cool. Well, let's bring out Josh, and he can tell us who his favorite historical fascist is. <laughs> First 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 of all, uh can we just talk about how I was not expecting neither uh Zhu Zhiang or uh, Talleyrand as favorite historical figures, so thank you for <laughs> making my night. Uh <laughs> Zhu Zhiang is also super famous for his empty fort strategy, which is just premium bullshit material. We just sat at a gate. He sat at a gate acting like he's cocky as shit. Saying like <laughs> so these people are just like Oh fuck, we can't go into this fort. It's probably just like ready for an ambush. He's just he's so cocky, he's sitting on the fucking gate. He bluffed. <laughs> he bluffed his fucking way to make an army not go into an empty fort. That's so good. Yeah, so anyways, that's why he's my hero personally. So uh, I, I should I gotta say, in this anime in where he wherein he becomes like a manager for like a J-pop star, he uses all of his like famous strategies to like help bring people to the shows. So it's it's goofy as shit. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I actually I, got a buddy that recommended that one, so on the list please do. yep yep <laughs> sorry sorry to do this to you uh yeah. and as oh, for talleyrand <laughs> it looks so unhappy. <laughs> as for talleyrand i just yeah i have to appreciate that this man managed to make his way through i think it's four or five administrations without getting his head cut off i know incredible fucking and incredible everyone, like he was statistically likely on a baseline to get his head cut off and he yeah, did every time so. every time you're like all oh, <laughs> Does Talleyrand have it this time? No, you did it again. So yeah, I can uh, really dream picks. of that charisma. <laughs> uh, as for my favorite fascist, let's go on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a very conventional pick and go with uh, uh, Tojo from the um, Japanese one, purely because uh... out of oh no, no 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 out of all of the fascist leaders during World War II. He was the only one who could get his fucking ass reamed out by his lessers and do nothing about it because of how fucked the Japanese government was during World War II. His, his admirals... Good? I mean, I find it funny. Imagine thinking you're top shit of the government and then this admiral comes in, says you should kill yourself, that you're useless, and then fucks off and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so, I like him because he got bullied the most out of all the World War II fascists. <laughs> Other so than maybe you, Mussolini. The I'm most so happy impotent. you came in on... So happy you came in on this question. This is real. This is my hole. It was made for me. Energy. <laughs>